This is my build of the Museum of Science and Industries gift shop kit of the U505 submarine made by Ravel. I cleaned and test fit the hull and deck parts. The side railings had flash in every opening. I had to clean each of those with my number 11 blade and my flexi file. Working my way from bow to stern, I had to hold the two halves together, kind of section by section, with the Tamiya thin cement. I took the same approach with the two deck top pieces. I built the tower in the same fashion as the hull. I finished the stand. It's not the greatest. You have to have it exactly in the right place for this to sit level. This was really difficult in here to get all this to match up with those ridges. I had to use a thin down flexi file um, to get in there. Have everything the way it should be now. So that's going to look something like that on this main gun. It looks absolutely nothing like the references. So I, I said I wasn't gonna do any scratch building, but I may do a little bit of a fix up on this uh, uh, main gun. These here actually look halfway decent. I forgot to plug that hole. There's a gun that goes there that was actually lost during a British bomb attack in November of 42. So I built this hole with testers contour putty. Now I'm going to glue this piece on. I think I'm going to try to build, and I'll put the reference in, I'm gonna to try to build the, it's not a cage, but it's like a, a support and a roll bar, it kind of looks like, that goes over um, here. And my references have uh, ladders going uh, on each side. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't gonna scratch build, but. I can't resist. I'll show a close-up of all the flash on here, every single edge. Next, I test fit all the rear propulsion and steering pieces, which I'll attach just prior to painting the lower hull. Then I test fit the forward steering parts and found the support structure too far from the edge of the bow plane. So I trimmed the support structure and then retest fit it. Okay, so much for not scratch building. <laughs> I cleaned up the guns on top. Um, starting with that conning tower or the periscopes. I drilled through that piece and then uh, cut off some paper clip and pushed that through there. Um, and then I have the plastic pieces to go on top, which I've trimmed down. There was fencing on that first deck, so I used photo etch netting from like an aircraft carrier netting um, to represent that. I added those two ladders and opened up those openings and then from the top, added a few more railings to make that correct. Then I added that white structure in the middle. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I tried to simulate that as best as possible. On that railing where the wires are going to attach, I added supports. These railings are nothing like the references, but you know, I'm going with those. I then tried to improve the gun. I put a different barrel on there that looks a little more realistic. And then out of spare photo etch frame, I etched those shields. Those boxes are, uh, are ammo boxes. So those are my improvements on the tower. I extended the railings. I did also fill that seam between the two deck parts. Before I go any further, I just want to say that this is a very oversimplified molding of the U505. So I'm just having fun with it. It will not be a detailed replica of the sub by any stretch. I'm definitely having fun trying to bring her as close as I can given what I have to work with. And I'm strictly using only what I have in my spares box and, and building stash. But yeah, it's a it's a cool little kit. I actually might throw a few photo etch parts on here. I've got a bunch of this leftover PE. I do want to simulate, I saw in the references, a, 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 a like an opening there. Uh, with a hatch. I'm also really happy with the way the guns came out. Um, that larger gun, I added some magazines. On these other guns over here, I also added um, the magazines to those, as well as where their shoulders go in when they're, you know, leaning up against the gun. I, I, I just bent some photo etch and glued it to there as well. I've completed the cleanup and correction on the bow. The last thing I need to do is prepare for the cables, which run basically from 
the back of the tower back to the back of the ship and then from the front of the tower they come together into one and then to the front and i have this bead string wire that looks like actual cable so basically what i want to do is find the right size bit that fits that and then drill a couple holes back here and then it will come up and over the uh, supports that I built and then back to the tower. And then a single point up here where it'll come back, meet like where it splits off and then go to the front. I'm going to uh, drill those holes back here. What I'll do is cut off just the very tip, you know, something like, like that up on the nose, just cut the tip of this off and then the cable coming out of that. That completes all of the construction of the submarine and all the sub assemblies are ready to go. I started with the Tamiya Fine White Primer on all the sub assemblies. Then I applied Tester's Gloss Black on the periscope tops, the rear cable supports, the large main gun, and the two anti-aircraft guns, and then finished with the support base. I just put the uh, first coat on, the um, neutral gray. The next color is the intermediate blue on the tower. Periscope piece and that antenna piece. Intermediate blue on the uh, shield and the base of the big gun. RLM 75, that's the deck color. Before I could shoot the final color on the lower hull, I had to attach all the propulsion and steering parts to the sub. I attached the propeller shaft slash horizontal rudder piece, then the vertical steering piece, and finally the vertical tail rudders. At the bow, I first attached the bow planes perpendicular to center plumb, then I attached the previously corrected arms forward of the bow planes, the separation line between the neutral gray on top and then that Euro 1 gray. If you follow that line, it is right at the bottom of those openings on the side. I used Tamiya tape, hugging the line I just established, to mask off the neutral gray. Then I covered over the deck with Parafilm M and then rigged the painting platform. The last color, the Euro 1 gray. So I did the entire bottom. I coated the tower in the pledged floor wax so that I can uh, put the decals on there later. Starting with these images, I had to find the right size that would fit the tower. Same thing with uh, this front image would fit down there. For this image, I printed it on white decal paper so that when I cut it, I can get those white edges and the yellow will show up better with the white underneath it. But then for the Kriegsmarine symbol, I believe that is, I did that on clear decal film. And then the same thing for the uh, German Kriegsmarine flag, found the right sizing. So if there's a pole holding it at the back there, that should be the right size. I'll make a pole for it. I removed all the masking to get my first look at the uh, tri-colored sub. There's the sub with all four colors. Coat the whole thing in future and then start doing the shading. So I've hit the ship with uh, Pledge Floor Wax. With just Tester's gold. I did the propellers and the sides of the four posts just as an accent. Here's the stand and you can see the gold on the outside. It looks kind of cool, um, but now I actually want to take it a step further. There's this big oval spot where the decals go. What the decals have, this U505, and then down here in white, German Wolfpack leader. You know, the reason I painted this black was I was going to put the U505, cut the German off, and then have Wolfpack leader. But now I'm thinking of making that gold. Maybe I'll print my own words out on decal film. So here's how that stand came out. Yeah, I think that's going to work really nice. Before I cut these out or anything, I am going to coat them with the liquid decal film. I printed them three or four days ago, so they should be completely dry. And now to kind of like seal them down, I hit them with the liquid decal film. I'm ready to place these decals. I've got the red and the blue micro set. I've uh, cut very tightly around these stells or shields make sure this is gonna fit trim that a little closer 
And then I carefully place each of the decals on the tower. Don't touch it anymore. So I hit those with the uh, red micro set and now I'm gonna let that completely dry. Here's those decals, a little jagged edge there, but uh, overall not bad. And then for the stand decal, uh, I think it's gonna be this bottom one here. Yeah, I think that one's gonna work there nicely. And I just painted them on the same uh, transparent decal paper. I'm using the Tamiya dark gray panel line accent and just going over the deck and just letting that run down into in between those deck boards. I carefully filled each of the openings along the sides of the upper hull with the black panel line solution. Then I cleaned up any overflow or smudges with a Q-tip dipped in mineral spirits. Went back to the deck and did some cleanup and final touches there. I also used the Tamiya black panel line wash to get into that anchor recess. And then these square structures below the railing there looked a little bare to me. So I went around those with the dark gray. The black was a little too strong, so I'm going over it with the light gray and then wiping some of it away so I kind of get both. Next, I trimmed to fit, then glued in place the rear cable supports I scratch built earlier. I made that flagpole out of the cable supports that came with the kit, and I just sanded it down until it fit in there. And I think the angle is right. And next I did those paper clip periscope pieces, and then I glued that piece in. I coated the two main sub-assemblies with Tester's dull coat just to bring down that shininess. And slid the first of those sub-stand nameplate decals into place. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I attached the tower to the sub with thick super glue along the interior edges of the tower. Then I pressed it into place and held it till dry. So I'm literally in the home stretch, and today I went out to check the mail and I saw this and I thought, Jared B. And I open it up and sure enough, it's from Jared B. Models. And he sent me a really nice letter um, and he said, hey, I had this Jeep Willys model and I thought you might like it. Uh, I'm in the same boat with you. I mostly build armor and I'm trying to branch out into other types of models. He sent me this uh, Jeep Willys and I, I, I it's uh, uh, the week after the um, Butch O'Hare show and I swear to God, I had one of these in my hand uh, at that show and but it was like brand new and there was a couple of vintage kits I wanted so I put it back because I was on a budget so I put it back and I said if I you know have money left over of the stuff that I, I really wanted um, I would come back and get it because it reminded me of I don't know if you've heard of the Cox gas-powered cars and planes uh, but when I was a kid we had a Cox car that was uh, a Jeep just like this one um, so I put it back and I didn't get it and, you know, <laughs> karma, kismet, I don't know what you call it, but look at that. There it is. Um, and then he also sent me, uh, his favorite, a set of his favorite, um, sanding sticks. And as I'm working on this, I, I, I'm just about, all those are just about dead. Um, and these are really nice. And look at that, this, these narrowed down. Um, so you, you don't have to like cut them or anything. Um, so Jared, dude, thank you so much. That is so thoughtful and, uh, and greatly appreciated. For the cable on the front of the sub, where it comes together off of the tower and then a single line goes out to the bow, I had these crimp tubes. I have a, a single piece that's, you know, folded very tightly up front, shoved in at the fold, and then the single piece shoved in the other way. And I think that's going to work. You know, I could just drop some uh, super glue in there and then size these appropriately to the front 
and obviously size that one out to the bow. I'll pop a reference in. I'm also going to use the smallest of these on the cable to represent whatever these are in the reference. Those fit the cable nicely, and then again, I can just touch them with some glue and then paint them black by hand. The decals finally like fully dried. So that's how that came out, and uh, it's the same on the other side. I'm pretty happy with it. To attach the wires, I've got super glue on the left and zip kick on the right. Can't let them get too close to each other or that will dry that up. With the beads already on the wires lying loose, I attach the wires from the stern forward to the tower. Then I circle back to space and attach the beads, each with a touch of glue. This one back here is fairly tight, but this one here definitely has some sag to it. It is really difficult to pull that and, and, and hold that tight and glue it to there without it sagging. I'm struggling. This is probably going to be my, and, and you can see the buildup on there, my fifth attempt. This has taken much longer than I thought it would. Okay, there we go. So I went back and did that side again, and now I'm happier with how tight it is. You can see the sticky tack there. Uh, so I sticky tacked it to the base and then the base to my mat. So there was no play anywhere. Um, so that when I kind of yank on it and quickly touch it with the, with the glue and the zip kick, uh, I, I can get it to stay. And those beads have now dried and I'm going to touch those with the black onto the front. As I explained earlier, I have a folded wire going into one end of that bead and then the single wire out to the bow on the other sorted through those beads to find the smallest ones and put three on each of the leads that'll go to the front of the tower and then three more there they are that goes out to the front of the bow i spaced and glued those beads on the front similar to the way i did on the back i'm using this um, clamp to hold this I'm going to get those the right length and then tuck them under there and then glue it from underneath. First I get them in exactly the right spot and then cut them off to the proper length. With the clamp holding them in place, I glue them from under the front edge with a drop of medium super glue. Okay, there we go. I painted all the beads black, painted the tops of those supports black. There's the bow and then that comes together, goes down to the front. I think those are pretty taut. That was a major pain. <laughs> Last parts to go on are on the tower here. Do these guns first. I did the big gun on the back next. Then I carefully glued that flag that I made onto the flagpole that I made. Then I glued those periscope pieces to the tops of those paper clips. Finally, I glued that circular antenna piece to the front of the tower. And with that, the U-505 German Type 9C attack submarine was complete. Or at least a fairly simple rendition of it. Again, I wasn't striving for a perfect replica, and I don't think that's actually possible with this kit. Um, at least not without major surgery and lots of scratch building and maybe aftermarket parts. Um, instead, I just had fun with it. I tried to be creative with what I had on hand and only really adding parts to enhance it and get it closer to the real thing without going overboard. I also experimented with some stuff like using that spare photo etch frame and pieces and that cable and beads. And also, not all the parts are necessarily all the same scale. Actually, I don't even know what scale this is. 1 to 100 or 1 to 144 maybe. But yeah, it was just a simple, fun build as a break from the more intense builds where I'm striving for perfection or whatever. So I hope you enjoyed it, and, and please let me know what you think. Again, a huge thank you to Jared B. for that awesome mail call care package. Uh, model on, brother. And for the rest of you, as always, thanks for watching, and happy modeling.